with the flat earth thing, is, is that something that you truly believe? Does it matter? Yes. For what? Well, I mean, What's so important about that? you have millions of fans. Out of, out of all the podcasts, that's what you took out of it? The flat earth? I mean, you were asked again about yeah. it on camera. The fact that that could be news all over the world just shows you how. What does it show you? I mean, the fact that it's a social phenomenon that Kyrie thinks the world is flat is hilarious. Well, We got the sun in its in its large and smaller orbit, and the moon has a similar orbit, where it's has a small orbit inside of in the side of large one that goes around the flat Earth. You can see along the edge the Arctic Circle, and uh, the way this is uh, put into the flat Earth theory is it kind of negates the effect of a lunar eclipse and I'm gonna get into that from one of the founders of the flat earth movement in just a second so there we go this is how they explain a, a solar eclipse happening right there which will make it highly visible on the flat earth for everyone you know what I'm saying? That's, that's an important uh, piece of information to remember. Now, getting into uh, the 
Tetic Astronomy book written by a guy named Parallax. Y'all know I'm getting to the history of this later. You know, I ain't going to just hit y'all with no science. Because, uh, you know, flat earthers don't really believe in science. You know, for the, for my people who do, you know, I'm going to give y'all scientific explanations as well. So, uh, I'm going to read this to y'all. This is a quote from Parallax. You know, I think he was in uh, England when, when, when he, when he, uh, when he recorded this bit of information or whatever. So he said, sometimes in a total lunar eclipse, the moon will appear quite obscure in some parts of its surface and in other parts will exhibit a high degree of illumination. To a certain extent, I witnessed some of these phenomena during the merely partial eclipse of February 7, 1860. I prepared during the afternoon of February 6th for witnessing the eclipse without any distinct expectation of seeing much worthy of note. I knew, however, that upwards of eight tenths of the disk world be covered, and I was anxious to observe with what degree of distinctness the eclipse portion could be viewed, partly as an interesting fact and partly with a view of verifying or discovering the weak points of an engraving in which I am concerned of a lunar eclipse so he basically um, was tell he trying to say because of his point of view of seeing the lunar eclipse and the eclipse was on wasn't it was illuminated only uh, it had certain parts that was illuminated and it was only a partial eclipse he, he, he wants to say that um, he goes on to, to start talking about how, how it's not really the earth um, covering it, but it's like a um, there's a disc up there too. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be a disc in the sky or it's coming from uh, the sun going so far away where it's no longer reflecting light. Uh, he he got a, a lot of explanations, but I'm I'm let's just let's just get to to ours right now. The elliptical path of the moon around the Earth intersects the elliptical path of the Earth around the Sun twice every lunar month. The intersecting points are called lunar nodes. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the Earth and Sun at a lunar node. The moon blocks the Sun's rays and the moon appears black with a halo around it. A lunar eclipse occurs when the moon passes behind the Earth at a lunar node. The Earth casts a shadow on the moon. Now he really didn't understand the visibility aspect that it was depending on where you are on the earth or how much of the exposure you may see. Like whoever's right in front of that lunar eclipse is going to see the complete eclipse or at least 98% of it. Now if you're far east or far west of that eclipse, you're going to see the side of the moon. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to see the side that's not shadowed by the earth. And that's just that's just common sense. You know what I'm saying? You can go back to this diagram and verify that. Now, if we're going off the flat earth theory, and since the eclipse happens on the very edge of the Arctic inside this dome, no matter where you are on the flat earth, you will see a, a complete eclipse. Now, let's get into how I know the visibility is different. Now the moon appears inverted from northern and southern hemispheres. So we're going to go from Seattle to Perth. Now you can see here that the orientation of the moon will be completely different. And this is this is how we know he didn't uh, parallax didn't explore the earth before making these claims. Now the stars appear to rotate counterclockwise around the north star Paralis. Stars appear to rotate clockwise around the southern cross. So here we got in Chile, and you can see the slow movement of the stars in one direction. Then we go to the other side of the planet, and it's moving in the opposite direction. Here we go again in Australia, moving in one direction. 
in France, this, this was a hard one to see because of the clouds, but it's moving in the opposite direction. That, that wouldn't happen on a flat earth. It's going to be one direction. You got one one hemisphere. You know, and this is to this for them people that's talking about the boats don't uh disappear. You know what I'm saying? There we go, right there. I got you some imagery. Now I gotta address the claims of that planes can't fly over Antarctica. Now this is a whole website you can go to where you can book a flight to fly over Antarctica. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's true that commercial planes don't fly over Antarctica. You know it, it makes no sense for them to do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's stops you can make on the way. Like it's is 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 there's there's engineering um, failures that can happen. Like who wants to fly their plane over the Arctic with with all those people on it? Especially if you can make more money going a long way. You know what I'm saying? You know how that shit works. But, uh, excuse me, I, I'm trying to do this without cussing. You know, somebody was complaining about me cussing on my video. So, so. But, uh, this is a, a website, uh, Art Antarctica in a Day. Sightseeing flights over Antarctica from Australia. You know what I'm saying? Get your coins together, flat earthers, and go check it out. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody flew off the planet yet on this tour. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure it would have made the news. So, we operate one day uh, sightseeing flights over Antarctica, departing from Australia every summer. Taking around 12 hours, the flights are the easiest way to view this great white continent. No passports are needed, and you are kept warm and safe with a glass in hand <clears throat> while our privately chartered uh, Conta 747 glides effortlessly over the scenery. You know what I'm saying? You can book your flight today, Flat Earthers. Book your flight. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's go back and check out the Flat Earth map right quick. You know what I'm saying? Because according to them, Antarctica covers is it's it's a damn it's a barrier going around the world. You know what I'm saying? So they flying around the world in 12 hours in a 747. You know what I'm saying? That boy gotta be souped up. To, to fake something like that. They going that fast and they flew off the planet yet? Shoot. Man, tell me something. I don't know. But let's look at <laughs> let's look at this uh let's let's take another look at the flat earth map right quick. Now this is the most uh common flat earth map. The real world, you know what I'm saying? What they call it. Now you can see around the edges, that's where Antarctica is supposed to be. And according to the uh, founders of the flat earth theory, there is no south pole. You know what I'm saying? There's a magnetic pole uh, north in the middle. And the rest is Antarctica around the edge. Ain't no south pole. So now we're going to take a look at that very tour. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen the edge of the earth yet. You know what I'm saying? They flying over Antarctica. You see it on the sea. You know what I'm saying? Where the edge of the earth at? I'm pretty sure somebody would have took a picture of it. And you can see the, the curve of the horizon. It ain't going to be no no big obvious bend because of the mass of the earth. It's massive. You know what I'm saying? Your perspective as a human is very tiny. You know what I'm saying? You're giving yourself too much credit to think you're large enough to see the, the curvature of the earth. That's like that's like uh you know what I'm saying putting the putting the ant on a mountain you know what I'm saying expecting him to see over the top or or, or see around the, the the sides you know what I'm saying he, he that's not gonna be realistic for an ant you know what I'm saying put yourself in the perspective of something small. It ain't no no wall of ice. You know what I'm saying? That's something. That's something. Uh, you can't hide that. You know what I'm saying? Today, somebody talk about uh somebody found the wall and uh 
talking about I'll send you their contact information so I can interview them. I'm pretty sure they, they would have got somebody else way more famous or, or important than me to interview them if they found the edge of the earth. Come on, man. Fuck out of here with that. The, um, the day and night of the flat earth. That's how they tell y'all it happened. You know what I'm saying? As you see, the sun don't ever set. It just fades off in the distance. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no dusk, no dawn, according to how we see it right now. You know what I'm saying? Where the sun's rising over the horizon. It just fades off to where you can't, in the distance, like an airplane. You know what I'm saying? You can't see it no more. It's nighttime. Now, I want y'all to remember that Antarctica is supposed to be this edge on the outside. And there is no north and south pole according to to a round earth. You know what I'm saying? A spherical earth. According to this theory. So you see a part of Antarctica has different nights and days. You know what I'm saying? I guess, you know, the sun is Antarctica so big the sun don't cover it all. Now so y'all think I don't just be making this stuff up. Here's the Australian Arctic Division. Uh, they leading Australia, Australia's Arctic program. These are the same people that run that. Uh, well, they they probably over oversee that that uh, that flight. And it's from the Australian government and all that. Now, our, on Antarctica's coast, where our stations are located, there are usually a couple of weeks in midwinter around 21st of June. That's the summer solstice. When the sun does not rise in a couple of weeks in summer around Christmas when there is a 24 hour sunlight. The polar circles. Let's hold on. All right, the polar circles, both the Antarctic Circle at 66 uh, six degrees, 33 uh, south. You know, they got the coordinates. You can go find it on uh, Google. Uh, mark the latitude beyond which the sun remains completely below the horizon throughout the day on midwinter's day and completely above the horizon on midsummer's day. As you move closer to the poles, the periods of winter darkness and summer light increase. And I'm about to show y'all in a second. Hold on. Now here's that flat earth theory again. No, the Antarctic uh, circle on the outside. Uh, here go to the same diagram. This is what they believe happened. Now, if this was happening on the Antarctic, uh, Antarctica, it wouldn't. You wouldn't have periods of of 24 hour darkness or 24 hour light, as you see. You know what I'm saying? As you see what's going on. You know. And I'm I'm going to show you why this happens. You know, because the, the earth isn't spinning just completely upright. We all know it, it's, it spins on the axis. Now, like I said, during the summer solstice, June 21st, you have polar days, six months of day. Because the that uh, pole is, is pointing straight at the uh, straight at the sun. I right, see the south pole, which they say doesn't even exist, is experiencing six months of night. And this is the in the middle. You have the uh, the times that that I mentioned. That the, the closer you get to the poles, uh, the 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 times vary. So I can I can show you better than I can tell you. You know. Now here, I'm about to show you a 24-hour time lapse of the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. You know what I'm saying? Since people think it's always a game, anything I, I talk about, I'm going I'm to prove it. I'm going to show it to you every time. You know what I'm saying? So this is Scott based Antarctica. You got the latitude. You got the directions. Google Earth it. Flat Earth is Google Earth it. Flat Google Earth it if you want to. Let's check it out.
Got the clock right there and everything for you. Now, according to uh, the flat Earth theory, this is this is almost how you should experience day and night all the time. You know what I'm saying? Besides the sun going out further in the distance, because it ain't no setting. You know what I'm saying? So this is when that this specific pole is is pointing directly at the sun. So it is no horizon for it to set on. This is how we would experience day and night on Earth, on a flat Earth. But we don't. Wait till the clouds, because I know the clouds have to come through and stuff. We're back at high noon, sun at its highest point. That's the camera they use, and you can see it following the sun across the sky. We ain't, we ain't got to fake it, you know what I'm saying? We ain't got fake diagrams like the flat earth. Now, with that being said, here is the flight paths. This is something you can look up, you know what I'm saying? You can look it up. Now, there's supposedly no flight path, you know what I'm saying? From from uh, South America to 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 the tips of Africa, and you can obviously see there there is. You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a few going across there. You can see them. Again, you can do this. You can look this up yourself. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gotta fake it. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gotta fake it at all flat earthers you know so this is the this is what y'all believe you know what I'm saying this is how long that it far away is so this is why they need y'all to believe that that's the same flight this is the same flight and it's five times longer on a flat earth map this is why you gotta believe that's not possible you know what I'm saying you gotta lay certain bait for people to to believe stuff you know what I'm saying you're not going back to research it obviously now, with that being said, I'm gonna get into the true, uh, the true history in the way I like to debunk things. You know what I'm saying? You no, know, conscious community love history. They love their facts. I don't know why they love the flat Earth theory though. You know what I'm saying? They also believe satellites not up there. You know, it's a lot of people who go say this. This video I'm playing from a satellite is fake, showing night and day. <laughs> from out of from from the edges of space, but hey, you know what I'm saying? We don't see no no sun going in circles around a flat uh plane. You know what I'm saying? It it, it flew over the Arctic a second ago. I'm just no, I'm just saying. But we finna get into the historic part of this. Where where did the flat earth come from? Who was the founders? Who was pushing it? You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, we could start off with uh Nah, we ain't gonna start off with parallax. We're gonna ease into that. We're gonna end the ease into Mr. Parallax. You know what I'm saying? Now we about to get into the uh the reading section. So for my people who don't like books and information and researching, which is mostly flat earthers, you know what I'm saying, you might as well cut the video off now because the rest of this is going to be straight historic information on the flat earth movement. Now I got this from one of our brothers, um, Ali L and Prince Namer, whatever, you know what I'm saying, they did their thing with, the, with this book, I quoted them a couple of times, I got a, another source from this book, uh, from the next page, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna read right after this, you know, but it ain't as long. This just give us it give, this gives us a good background uh, on on flat Earth history, and I'm going to go into deeper into it. This is just an overall summary. The flat Earth movement is a religious movement based on European interpretation of the Bible, mostly King James Version, 1611 A.C.E. Modern flat Earth hypothesis originated with the English writer Samuel Robotham 
This well-known northern surname is, a Anglo, is of Anglo-Saxon origin. 1816-1884. Based on his conclusions derived from the Bradford Level Experiment, Robotham published a pamphlet called Zetetic Astronomy, which he teaches that Earth is not a globe. The hypothesis is in which the Earth is flat disk centered at the North Pole and bounded along its southern edge by a wall of ice. With the sun and moon 3,000 miles and the cosmos 3,100 miles above Earth. He also published a leaflet entitled The Inconsistency of Modern Astronomy and Its Opposition to the Scriptures. So he was doing all this just to, just to combat science uh, with the Bible. And a lot of people, that's the conscious community's first argument, you know what I'm saying? Is why would the people who gave us religion give us the right science? Well, here you go. This is the person who who is who is pro the religion y'all against and gave y'all the science of flat earth. You know what I'm saying? So where's the where's the contradiction? You know, y'all pointed out to me, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm struggling seeing what's going on here, you know what I'm saying? But the he uh where where did I stop at it? Uh okay well he op he was opposite opposition to the scriptures the King James version blah 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 which argued that the Bible alongside our senses supported the idea that the Earth was flat and immovable and this essential truth should not be set aside for a system based solely on conjecture so at the end of the day the European is at it again trying their best to teach all their theories as if they are a fact based on the gods of Europe called Christianity or the, or the Bible. This is the same people who gave us that book and then gave us nothing but hard times, hunger, nakedness, and out of doors. History. In 1861, Robotham settled in London, producing 14 children, of whom four survived. He was also alleged, allegedly uh, to be using the name Dr. Samuel Barley selling the secrets for prolonging human life. And I wasn't going to all that, but I ain't see no point because this is about flat earth. In his book, Zedic Astronomy, The Earth Not a Globe, appeared in 1864. After Robotham's death, Lady Elizabeth Blunt, we're going to talk about her later, founded the Universal Zetetic Society, which attracted thousands of followers published a magazine entitled The Earth Not a Globe, uh, reviewing remained active well into the early part of the 20th century. After World War I, the movement underwent a slow decline, but it was revived in 1956 as the Flat Earth Society in the United States. Robotham's ideas were taken up by the Christian Catholic Apostolic Church and promoted widely on their radio station. His work in the United States was continued by William Carpenter. Carpenter, a printer originally from Greenwich, England, and a supporter of Robotham, published Theoretical Astronomy Examining Exposed, Proving the Earth Not a Globe, in eight parts from 1864 under the name Common Sense. So now you tell me if the second degree in the 1 to 10 is true or not. All I can do is shake my head at these Europeans and our Asiatic brothers that that follow the gods of Europe that that we know nothing of. In 1956, Samuel Shelton created the International Flat Earth Society as a successor to the Universal Zetetic Society and ran it as the organizing secretary from his home in Denver, Dover, England. The society also claimed that the Apollo landings were a hoax staged by Hollywood, a position also held outside the Flat Earth Society. At the end of the day, it is a religious society. So they done conned y'all all over again into following a religion. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm going to show y'all because we're going to talk about um, uh, Samuel Shelton too. In just a second. All right, so this is the other source that I got from them. 
You know what I'm saying? Same book, you know what I'm saying? It had came out with another one later on. It had uh, a little bit more information, I guess. So, uh, in 1969, Shenton persuaded Ellis Hillman to become president of the Flat Earth Society. But there is little evidence of any activity on his part until after Shenton's death. When he added most of Shenton's library to the archives of the Science Fiction Foundation, he helped to establish. Come on, man. Shenton died in 1971. This dude, Charles K. Johnson, inherited part of uh, Shelton's, Shenton's library from Shenton's wife, established and became president of the International Flat Earth uh, Flat Earth Research Society of America and Covenant People's Church in California. As I said once before, this is a Christian religion, not a science. Flat Earth Society recruited members by speaking against the U.S. government and all its agencies. Man, they, didn't they done uh, recruited damn near the whole conscious community by doing that. Particularly NASA, of course. Much of the society's literature is focused on interpreting the Bible to mean that the earth is flat, although they do try to offer some scientific explanations and evidence for this hypothesis. This is a Christian belief system not based on science nor fact. This see it right here just to be a little funny. If you're ever feeling really stupid, remember that many people believe in this book. You know what I'm saying? Even the people who wake up every day and call themselves banging on the beats. You know what I'm saying? They call themselves, you know what I'm saying, banging on the Bible, but supporting flat earth. So this is the earthly model according to the Bible. The earth is flat. Isaiah 24 and Matthew 4. The earth doesn't move. First Chronicles 16.30. The earth rests on pillars. Samuel 2.28. The sun goes around the earth. Joshua 10.13 The stars are light set in the dome over the earth. Genesis 1, 6, and 17. That's, your, that's almost the complete foundation of the flat earth movement. This is what y'all support. I mean, I don't see y'all laugh at it sometimes. Now this is the first major name we ran into in the historical facts. Samuel Robotham. You know, I'm gonna read you a little background on him. You know, at the beginning, this, at the end, it says he's an inventor. You know, he was the English inventor who wrote Zetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, under the pseudonym Parallax. That's a, 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 a pseudonym is a is a fake name. Cashing in on public skepticism towards the rise of scientific rationalism and its attack on biblical authority, Samuel Burley Robotham took the pseudonym Parallax. Christian a new school of Zetic astronomy and toured the country lecturing on his flat earth theory much to the consternation of the astronomical establishment as well as inventing fireproof starch in a light preserving uh, cylindrical railway carriage Parallax spent his time arguing that the earth was a stationary disk the Earth was only 400 miles. Uh, the Sun, excuse me, was only 400 miles from London, and the disappearance of ships over the curved horizon was just a trick or perspective in refraction. Parallax was a showman, but his disciples took up his zetetic beliefs with the relish of the truly uh, dotty fundamentalists. The Christian. Uh, Pomacist John Hampton enthusiastically published his own flat earth works, attacking astronomers as uh, demented stargazers, condemning Newton as, as in liquor or insane, and insisting that the fraud of, the, of a globular earth be exposed so that our children no longer be taught that we are spun through the air like crop, cock chaffers at the rate of thousands of miles an hour. I mean, that's how they feel. You know? Then we got a little bit on Elizabeth Blunt. Now at the bottom it says, Lady Elizabeth Ann Blunt, Maud Blunt, established the Universal 
the Tedic Society in 1893, but ended her days writing pamphlets on sex that included accounts of her hermaphroditism and Adam's bisexuality. You know what I'm saying? So these people, y'all, these this is one of the founders to your flat Earth theory. Now I got this out of flat Earth, the history of an infamous idea. You know what I'm saying? I, my sources don't be biased all the time. It was not to be the case, however, for two years after his demise, um, talking about uh, the dude that was running it before, I forgot his name, the Flat Earth Campaign was revived by Lady Elizabeth Ann Moe Blunt on a much grander scale than before. An aristocrat, aristocrat on a Christian mission, Lady Blunt had been born Elizabeth Williams, the youngest daughter of James Zacharias Williams. A, a well-to-do architect and land sur surveyor who had offices in South London. And I can end right there, you know what I'm saying? It says she was on a Christian mission. You know what I'm saying? An earnest Christian with an interest in religion and science, James Williams had philanthropic uh, uh, learn learnings and, f and fondness for, for lecturing on on subjects such as electricity and astronomy. His daughter Elizabeth was to develop similar interests, although she chose to adopt a strict literal interpretation of the Bible and all of its statements about the natural world. You know what I'm saying? So she knew better. She was really just either hustling. I think they got cut out, so I said she was either hustling or crazy. Excuse me. But um, here goes Charles K. Johnson, the dude that was passed to. He was one of the latest founders in America. This is the, the Cali dude. So Charles Kenneth Johnson was from 1972 until his death the president and energetic promoter of the International Flat Earth Society, which he and his wife, uh, Maggery, ran from their home in California. He claimed the Apollo moon landings and space exploration in general were fake to lead people away from the truth of the Bible, which he said taught the Earth was flat. These are the founders of the of the of the movement y'all following. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are Christians, conscious Christians still. Y'all got that Christ consciousness, all right? In 1971, Charles K. Johnson became the new president of the Flat Earth Society. Under his leadership over the next three decades, the group grew in size from a few numbers members to about 3,000, probably like in the 100,000s now. Johnson distributed newsletters, flyers, maps, and other promotional materials to anyone who asked for them, and he managed all membership applications together with his wife, Matt Marguerite, who was also a Flat Earth. So y'all following these Christian flat earthers. You know what I'm saying? They ain't said nothing about any scientific um, organizations being involved. You know what I'm saying? Just the Bible. So if you believe in this, you also believe in this. You know what I'm saying? Adam needs these to bunny all that. It's all good, I know. We know it's, it's cool. It's cool. I'm gonna end on this note though. Uh, one more book source, you know what I'm saying? I can, I can overdo it with the books sometimes, so I'm told. So, um, this is from the Encyclopedia of Anthropology. Uh, Christian-based creationism. One of the oldest associations of creationists is the Flat Earth Society. While a seeming anarchism today, the Flat Earth Society maintains a lively discussion-based on a literal translation of the biblical account of Noah and the flood. Their view is that the earth is covered by a solid dome, a firmament, and that attempts to prove the earth is, is round or biased, politically driven propaganda. That's what they believe. That's what y'all got the same beliefs. Y'all are creationists. Y'all undercover Christians. You know what I'm saying? So I got the definition of creationist down here just in case anybody's confused of what that is. A person who believes that the universe and living organisms originate from specific acts of divine creation 
as in the biblical account. Now, I want to thank y'all for watching this video. I know I can be sarcastic sometimes. My my motive is never to insult anybody. It's just to get my point across. I, I debunk a lot of information because I want to see our minds liberated from the lies that's pushed into the conscious community in some way found its way in. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank everybody who watched this video to the end. Subscribe to my channel and be looking out for more videos.